Instagram. I'm live on Instagram. I'm live everywhere else. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, this is our live that we do on Wednesdays. We're here every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. Pacific, answering your real estate questions. Uh, very excited to be back with you guys. Uh, if you have not yet checked out my course on direct mail, you should do that. Uh, in the time that we're now with the, the market the way it is, things changing, uh, it's going to get a little bit different trying to find deals, right? Uh, houses are going to be just, it's going to be a different conversation and you're going to have to do things a little differently than you did over the last two years. And so if you're struggling in that area, if you're struggling to get leads into your business and you're using direct mail, but not seeing success, or you're not using direct mail and you know that you should be, go and grab my course. It's called Winning Direct Mail. And if you go to my website at mikesimmons.com, forward slash winning direct mail, you can grab that free video course. It's everything I've learned about direct mail over the last seven or eight years. And I have spent over a million dollars on direct mail, like actually sending mail out, making all the mistakes that, that I made. So you don't have to make them. You can learn from my mistakes. Just go and grab that free course and you can start sending out your direct mail and start seeing results if you haven't to this point. Uh, like I said, we're here every week answering your questions. You can send them to me ahead of time if you want. If you know you can't be here, but you want your question answered, it's kind of a little cheat how you can do it. Just send it to me at Mike Simmons. Um, or send it to me at Mike at JustStartRealEstate.com. That's the best way to go. Mike at JustStartRealEstate.com or show up here live every Wednesday and just ask me your question. Now, the advantage of showing up live, if you're listening to this on my podcast or you're watching the replay on YouTube or wherever you happen to be finding this and you want to ask a question. Now, the reason you should be here live is because if you ask me a question live and I need to ask you back a follow-up question or I need clarification, we can have that dialogue and I can answer your question really, really effectively and get real specific to your, your situation. Uh, if you ask it, but then you're not here or you send the email to me and you're not here when I answer it, I, I answer it to the best of my ability, but I, I may not understand it completely what you're asking if the, if the question has some layers of complexity. So you're totally welcome to send those questions in, but if you're here live, it's a little bit better dialogue, a little bit better back and forth. So, okay. So let's get started on today's first question. Here we go. I need some cash fast and have a little money to spend. Uh, do you recommend wholesaling or flipping a deal? Okay. So this is an example of how, if you were live, which this person is not, they sent this question in, I could ask a follow-up question. My follow-up question would be, what do you mean by you need cash fast? What is fast, right? Fast is a relative term. For some people, needing fast cash means you need it before the end of the year. For other people, it means you need it before the end of the month. So if you need money like fast, fast, like you needed it yesterday and you need it as soon as possible, then wholesaling is absolutely what you should be doing because wholesaling can get you cash in your account within a week or two or three, like in a you know relatively short amount of time, usually less than 30 days. And sometimes you could do it in, in just a couple of days if everything fell into line perfectly. It's not normal that it's a couple of days, but it could be. We've had deals that we've signed them on a Friday and we've closed them on a Monday or Tuesday. It's highly unusual, but it can happen. Now, if you don't need money until the end of the year or maybe early next year, if that's what you mean by fast, like in the next six months, then flipping might be the way to go because the payday will probably be bigger. And But, but it doesn't happen in, in a couple of weeks. Okay. It happens in like a handful of months, usually four to six months for a flip from the time that you actually uh, close on it until you get paid on it after renovation and, and all that, right? Because uh, you, you close on that deal day one, and let's just say you're on top of it and you get the renovation done within two months, okay? It takes you eight weeks to get it done. Uh, then you have to sell it. And in this market that we're in, remember, we're not in the market from six months ago. We're in this market. And so in this market, it might take a month or two to sell your house. Maybe things are cooling off depending on your market. And so if it takes you two months to renovate it and then a, a month or two, let's just say two months to actually find a, a buyer that you accept their offer, then it takes another 45 to 60 days to close depending on who they're closing with, what bank or what mortgage company. So all told, we're like five or six months in before you actually get paid. So if you can wait for five or six months, then flipping is probably the way to go. 
if it has to be in a few weeks and you need that money fast. And when you say, when I say fast, I don't definitely don't mean six months from now. When I say fast, I mean yesterday. And so if that's what you're talking about, then, then wholesaling is definitely the way to go. So, and if you have a little money to spend, obviously I think you're saying that because you know, if you need to get a deal right now, like you, you really need it fast, then you're probably going to need to use some paid marketing. And for that matter, direct mail is exactly what I would suggest to you. If you're just kind of starting off and you, you haven't been doing this for a long time and you don't have consistent deal flow and you're like, hey, I need to get, I not only need fast cash, but I need to get my deal fast so that I can I can get paid for the deal that I find, then direct mail is how I would suggest that you do it. And if that's the case, then you need to go grab my course right now. Do not try to figure it out. I'm gonna throw it back on the screen here. Uh, MikeSimmons.com forward slash winning direct mail. You can also go to just winning direct mail.com. I'm not going to put it on the screen, but winning direct mail.com will take you there too. I'm telling you guys that course easily, I could charge thousands of dollars easily because the stuff that I, that I put into that, into those, those videos for you, I, I did literally spend a million dollars figuring that out. So there's a lot of information packed in there. And if I was going to start over or somebody was starting over with direct mail, that is exactly what I would follow. I would follow everything in those videos. I, I lay it out for you from end to end. And there's even a bonus video in there for you too that I won't spoil, spoil a surprise, but go grab those and you can get that and be off and running. I, I think direct mail, even still to this day, is the single best marketing channel that you can use for reliable results, for quick results. Other types of marketing may work as well over time, but it usually takes time or other forms of marketing maybe are less expensive, but they're also less reliable, less predictable. You're going to get less, uh, less leads. Frankly, there's only one or two other forms of marketing that I think can rival or sort of be up there with direct mail, but neither one of them work as fast or give you the direct feedback loop that direct mail does. So, and they're harder to control They're they're They can be predictable over time, Direct mail is predictable sooner, in my opinion. So um, if you haven't done it, in the, like for this question, right, they need cash now and they're thinking about wholesaling. Well, it's one thing to get the deal and like turn it around and make money fast. You certainly can do that. But sometimes, a lot of times when you're starting off, getting that first deal takes way longer than actually monetizing the deal once you have it. So in other words, I know some people, it takes some four or five months to get their first deal because they're not using my program or they're not they're not getting help from anybody who's done it before and they're trying to do it on their own. It takes them four or five, six months to get a deal, maybe a year, and then they wholesale it and maybe they wholesale it and they make money in a month, but it took them eight months to get the deal, right? So it's like all together, it took them nine months. So let's get that, don't underestimate how long it could take to get your first deal. Uh, you need to stack the deck in your favor and you need to seek out people who have done it before that are trying to help you like me and and take that advice and get that deal fast so you can turn it around fast. And frankly, if you need help turning it around, I'm here for that too. Uh, you can go to my website, mikesimmons.com and I have coaching options and things that you can do one-on-one -on -one with me so we can really dial, dial things in for you. So go and check out uh, the stuff that I have available for you guys to work directly with me if you want to do that. But in the meantime, go get the direct mail course. It's free. Like there's no reason not to. Just get it, watch it, and it can only help you. It can't hurt. Okay, let's jump into the next question. Okay, next question. I have five long-term rentals and the tenants are paying month to month. How much time and expense would it take to turn them into short-term rentals? Great question. Uh, requires a couple of follow-up questions, but I'm going to do my best to answer it without those follow-ups. Okay, how much time and expense would it take to turn them into short-term rentals? So short-term rentals, in case you guys listening, some people don't know what a short-term rental is. It's like, think of Airbnb, right? Um, or VRBO. It's a, it's turning it into like a vacation rental or like someone where they're renting it for like a day or two or a week at a time, right? Short-term rentals. Most people think Airbnb, right? When they think short-term rentals. So how long and how much would it cost? It depends. How badly have your tenants wrecked the place how, how much damage have they done if any maybe they've taken if they've taken pristine care of it and you renovated it before they moved in and let's just say they lived there for two years for the sake of argument and they took care of it like perfectly 
then it might not cost anything really to get it ready for a short-term rental. The only thing you'd have to do, it wouldn't be repairs, it would, but it would be like furnishing it and putting sheets and towels and all the like bathroom supplies and all the kitchen supplies, a coffee maker and silverware, all that kind of stuff, right? So that's an expense, beds and, and sofas. So depending on the size of the house, um, if it's a three bedroom, one bathroom ranch, for example, you know, you're probably going to spend between six and $10,000 getting it ready, but that's not renovations. That's just putting in the furniture and all of the things you need to run the business. Now, if it needs work because the tenants really messed it up bad and that it did damage. So you're going to have that six to 10 just to get it ready, but maybe whatever it costs to fix, you know, it's hard to predict. It depends on how badly they wrecked it, but you know, maybe you have to put 10,000 into it to do repairs and then another 10,000 to do, to make it a short-term rental, put all the things in it that you need because your tenants are taking their stuff, obviously, and you can't have a short-term rental unless you have beds and couches and chairs and tables and all that stuff. So, you know, I, I would say on the, on the conservative side, assuming that the house does need some repairs or updating, you know, maybe $20,000. As far as time goes, it depends on how good you are at managing renovations and getting furniture put into a house and assembled. But I don't see why you couldn't do it in a month or two, right? It sh shouldn't be that bad. If the house is a total disaster and your tenants just literally wrecked it and the renovations are more extensive, it could take longer, obviously. But I would say a month or two as far as time and cost, you know, it could be all over the board, but, you know, 10 to 20,000 for sure. I think is, is probably what you're looking at, but, but you have to look at what you're going to make going from long-term rental to a short-term rental in a lot of cases. And this is why short-term rentals are so popular now. In a lot of cases, the short-term rentals so, so much outperform the long-term rentals that it doesn't even matter if you put 20,000 into it, because you're going to make that back in year one from the, just the difference in what you're going to make from going from long-term to short-term. Now, this depends on the house. It depends on your market. It depends on a lot of things, obviously. But in general, short-term rentals can be way, way more profitable. They're more work too, though. So understand a long-term rental is like, you know, what people call mailbox money. You, you have this house and maybe somebody else manages it for you because there's not a lot to do. And you just get checks in the mail or you get deposits in your account every month. And it just isn't any work for you. You kind of set it and forget it kind of a thing. Short-term rentals, make no mistake, short-term rentals are a hospitality business. You are in the hospitality business, just like a hotel. You have people who check in, you have people who check out, you have questions and people have concerns and, and maybe complaints or things that they want to know in the middle of the night or in the middle of the day. Like You have to have some systems built around how you're going to manage that and take care of it because it is hospitality. So more work more reward for sure. The conversion shouldn't be a big deal. Like converting from the, the long-term to the short-term, that's, to me, that's the least of the concerns. The bigger concern is, are you prepared to run a short-term rental hospitality business? That's the question. But the conversion should not take too long. Okay, let's, uh, let's jump into the next one. All right, next question. Is your marketing changing as we enter into the recession? Yeah, for sure. The marketing the marketing may not change in terms of the marketing that I'm using, but the wording, the messaging is different because the messaging in the public is different. Six months ago, a year ago, the public was being told, and rightfully so, that their houses were going up in value and that their houses are worth more than they were three years ago or five years ago or whatever. Like People knew that their equity was at an all-time high. And when their equity is at an all-time high, you can't put messaging on your marketing that say things like, are you underwater or do you owe more than your house is worth? And that's messaging that was used 10 years ago, for sure, because a lot of people were in that position. Most people aren't in that position now. Or, you know, two years ago, are you facing foreclosure or, you know, are your interest rates high and your payments are too high? Like all of those things were not the case. We, you can't put that. When you're in the, in the, the homeowner's house or the seller's house, the messaging is different, right? All of the marketing the messaging is different and, and your conversations and the sales capacity are going to be different too because reality is different now. And so the marketing channels that we use are not going to change. And probably a lot because we don't, we don't use real market specific messaging on our mail or 
in in our in our uh, pay per click and and the things that we do. We do radio ads. Like we don't use real hyper market specific wording, so we don't have to change it a lot. The biggest change is going to be when the conversations we're having with the sellers. That that's going to be by far the biggest change that we're going to have to make, and that's the biggest change you're going to have to make because sellers are not hearing that their house is worth more than it ever been worth before, and that prices are going up. They're starting to hear that the market is cooling down and that the values of their homes are starting to drop. And if, depending on the market that you're in, you may have already seen this. Like you may say, oh, yeah, the, the prices have dropped dramatically over the last three or four months. In other markets, maybe you're not seeing that so much. In my market, I'm not seeing that so much. I'm not seeing values dropping. We're seeing time on market going up. So six months ago, time on market might have been less than a week. Now time on market is getting closer to a month. And so houses are still selling for relatively similar. Maybe it's going down a tad, but they're relatively similar. It's just taking longer. You're not getting those above asking offers day one. It might take a couple, two, three, four weeks before you get what you want, or maybe a little bit more. Maybe there's a little bit of a bidding war going on. It's just not happening Um as aggressively as it was before. Before people were like waiving all contingencies and they were they were giving price, you know, uh, appraisal gap guarantees and all that stuff that I, I'd never even heard of that before. But it was happening. It's not happening now. No one, no one's really doing that anymore. So it's just taking longer. And so the question isn't, you know, the better question isn't, are you changing your marketing? Although it might change a little bit. The best, the better question or the more important thing to consider is what is your messaging to the sellers? people that you're buying houses from, how are you approaching them? What kind of a, because now the leverage is starting to swing back in the buyer's favor, which is, hasn't happened in a while. And so when the leverage swings back in our favor, the conversations change. We don't, now we can start telling sellers, listen, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, it's a great house. Six months ago, it was worth X. Now it's not worth that much. And I'm sure you've heard on the news that house prices are going down. They're they're not houses aren't appreciating like they were six months or a year ago. And so your house value is right about here. Six months from now, it could be less, right? We don't know, but it could be less. And so you're having those kind of conversations. They're true. And some sellers take longer to get on board with the reality of what their house is worth. Uh, a lot of sellers are not going to want to believe that their house went down in value. They're just not. And so they're in a little bit of denial. You might have to have that conversation with them, leave without the contract, and then follow up with them until they hear it enough on the news and their neighbors start talking about it and they go on Zillow and they can see the price drop $10,000 in the last you know 30 days. They'll start seeing this stuff. And, and when you follow up with them at some point, it's very likely that they will you know, come, come around and they'll start realizing what's happening. And if it's not happening in your market, you can't use that language, but I know enough people around the country who's the, the market is changing and the values of homes are going down and they can use that language now. And it's not, it's not a scare tactic. It's honestly, you're making them aware of reality because if they need to move, right. And we buy from people who have motivation and it could be a lot of things, death, divorce, loss of job, downsizing, whatever it could be anything um, back on, you know, behind on taxes, deferred maintenance, all those things that all could be happening. And if they have a genuine legitimate need to sell and move fast, like they really have to, it's, it's legitimate. They have to move and they're not in touch with reality about what their house is worth. You're kind of doing them a favor by trying to bring them to reality so that you can help them move on to the next stage of life and, and get them whatever they need in order to, to get out of whatever challenges they're in, right? You owe them that. And if they don't want to hear it, you just need to follow up with them because they're going to hear it. It's going to happen for sure. And so those conversations are different. But the marketing is not different for me. Now, if you send out marketing that's really super market specific, yeah, you're going to have to change your marketing for sure. But if you're doing direct mail, when when the recession gets worse or when house prices go down even more, you can still do direct mail, right? So the marketing doesn't change. The messaging changes. So that's, that's what I would uh, tell you about that. All right. Next question. Uh, let's see. I'm looking to see if we have any Instagram questions. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, 
Next question, how did you get started with your lending company? Where do you get funding? And are you realizing a good rate of return? Do you only lend to real estate investors? Wow, this is a really specific question about my lending company. Um, I'll answer the last question first. Do you only lend to real estate investors? Yes, 100% yes. Not only do I only lend to real estate investors, at this time, I'm only lending to people who have either worked with me directly in one of my coaching programs or one-on-one -on -one coaching or somebody who ha who is currently in the seven-figure flipping mastermind, which is the uh, uh, high-level mastermind that I am a part of. Uh, I've talked about it a million times on this. I've talked about it on a podcast. You can go check it out anytime you want, or you can reach out to me about seven-figure flipping. Uh, if you're in that or you've worked with me directly, I will consider lending to you. If you haven't, I don't right now. I just have, there's too many people inside of seven figure flipping and too many people that I've worked with that want to work with me and get loans from, from my lending company. And so that's who I work with right now. The reason I do that is because I have a much higher level of um, knowledge or comfort with their, uh, with their companies, with their experience and with their expertise that I know they're, they're not only going to pay me back, but they're going to finish the renovation. I don't have a lot of risk, right? When I work with people that, that I know and trust. And so that's what I'm doing right now. So if you, if you never worked with me, you're not in seven figure flipping, unfortunately, I'm not going to loan to you right now. Uh, that could change in the future as my, as my lending company grows for sure. I'll probably start breaking out of that, but for now, that's who I'm lending to. Um, also you ask where, uh, how did I get started? It was pretty easy actually to get started. I decided I wanted to do it and then I did it right. Me and, and the guy that, that I'm partnered with in my lending company had a conversation in September, uh, two years ago. And we said, Hey, do you, should we do this? Is it a good idea? And, and the person who is my partner is not in real estate. He's kind of more of a silent partner. And he's like, is this a need that you see out there? And I said, yeah, it's a need that for sure it's a need. It's always going to be a need. And so we talked about it in September and we formed the company in October, right? It doesn't have to, everything doesn't have to take forever. If you if there's something that you think you should do that's good for your business, then do it. Don't deliberate on it forever. But so we did that the next month. Um, we did work with an SEC attorney because it's SEC regulated and, and it's over, there's oversight there and it's, you know, highly regulated business. And so we have an attorney that makes sure that all of our documents are com in compliance and that we're doing everything the way we're supposed to do it, um, which wasn't cheap, but that's kind of what you have to do in that arena. And that was really it. And the need is there. So I know enough people who need loans that that's not a problem. I, I definitely have enough borrowers. Um, and so your next question is where did you get funding? And so we get funding from all over. We have people that were inside of my personal network that I knew personally who can who um, is an investor in my fund. We go to outside folks because it's a five five O C uh, fund, which means we can advertise and solicit from people that we don't know as long as they're accredited. So if you're an accredited investor and you're interested in investing in this fund, then definitely reach out to me and you can reach out the same place, Mike at juststartrealestate.com and I can get you information. But so that's how I did it. Outside investors mostly are fueling and funding the growth of, uh, of questions or, or, or the growth of the fund. And so that's how we did it. Okay. So it looks like we have a YouTube question. Let me pop in there real quick. Juan on YouTube. Let's see. All right. We're putting it in the thing here. All right. Hey, Juan. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being here, man. All right. Question. Potential deal in North Carolina. Property has a reverse mortgage and the company is not responsive on apparently problematic title seem to want to keep the property seem to want to keep the property what do you do can explain more via email okay yeah maybe let's talk about this over email i'm not a reverse mortgage expert that's for sure um but whether the the reverse mortgage company wants to keep the property or not is not it's not really up to them um they have a reverse mortgage on it the question is do the sellers want to keep the property do the sellers want to sell and the reverse mortgage company is the one dragging their feet because that's just too bad. They don't get to decide who, when the property sells. Um, but uh, if the sellers don't want to sell, that's a whole different thing, right? But let's maybe shoot me an email and we can go back and forth and I can ask some questions to folks I know who are more in the reverse mortgage world. I'm not, I, I just haven't dealt with it a lot, but 
generally speaking, if the sellers and the and the people who who hold the deed, who are on the deed, if they want to sell, then they can sell, right? I don't really care. Uh, the seller is desperate to sell and said, I could have it if I give him 10K. Well, don't just give him 10K. I can tell you that. Don't hand him money until that reverse mortgage thing is figured out. You got to figure that out. But I would figure it out. If this is a good deal and if there's money to be made here, then you got to pursue it. This is why, this is how, you know, people say to me all the time, why would someone sell me their house for less than it's worth? And the answer is there's a million reasons why people do that, but they do it. And sometimes the best deals take a little bit of work. And that's why we as investors are able to make a lot of money when we do deals because we're we're doing things other people aren't willing to do. And so I would 100% stick with this. I would stay on the mortgage company. If you have to hire someone local to that mortgage company to go there in person, whatever you have to do, right? You have to get creative, but do not give the sellers $10,000 until you have that property. You're, you know, it's deeded to you and you own it. Or if they'll sign the deed over to you, that's the only reason why I might do it, right? If you can have them deed it to you for $10,000 and you record that deed and just make sure maybe go through a title company to make sure that it's all kind of legit. And they, I would still do a title search, right? You still do all your due diligence, go through a title company. And if they'll deed it to you, then I've done that where I've given people substantial amount of money when they deed the property to me, because then I own it, right? It's my property. So, um, but we can chat about this more over email so I can get a better understanding because uh, we're kind of running out of time tonight to go all the way through this. And I, I would probably have questions for people that I know who might have uh, more, more experience with reverse mortgages. But yeah, I would say in general, don't hand anybody money until you are on the deed and that deed is recorded and it's legal and you've done You've done all your title searches to make sure there's no other liens, right? You know about the reverse mortgage. Is there a contractor lien for $30,000 that you don't know about, right? You have to find that stuff out. So do your due diligence and only then, and, and would I let them deed it to me and then give them money. And then, then you could just deal with the reverse mortgage company if you had to, but it'll still be on them, right? It's in their name. It doesn't, when someone deeds you their property, it doesn't transfer the mortgage. It doesn't. So they would have to be, you'd have to make them aware of that, right? They're still responsible for that mortgage, but you know, it can be worked out. I've worked, I've worked things out that were much more hairy than this. So it's doable, but please, please do not give them $10,000 until you are the legal owner of the house. Okay. That is all we have for tonight. I'm looking at Instagram, nothing there. All right, guys, I appreciate you guys being here. Juan, thanks for the question. It was awesome. Uh, awesome for you to be here and you're joining through YouTube. So guys, if you want to, if YouTube is your thing and you want to find me there, you can definitely find me there. But I am here every Wednesday at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, answering your questions. Go and grab my direct mail marketing course. It's a free course. It's a free video course that walks you through everything. And in this market, you need that more than ever. And you can find it at MikeSimmons.com forward slash winning direct mail. You can also, when you're in the course, you can ask follow-up questions, right? I don't talk about that a lot, but the course allows you to communicate with me directly. So maybe that's a little bit of a hack. I don't know, but go in there and get the course. And if you have a question while you're in it, something about the course, just shoot me a message inside the course. I'll see it and I'll go in there and reply to you and we'll get the questions answered and get you moving forward and getting those leads coming in fast and furious through your direct mail. All right, guys, we will see you next week.